pastors at North Park Church. Uh, very grateful to once again be bringing your uh, weekly life group message to you. And we are still in our Samson series. This week we are on week seven in our life group. And these are our key verses this week come from Judges 15, verses 9 through 17. So sit back, uh, settle in, have your Bibles open, follow along with me as I read these verses. And then we will go ahead and get into some discussion questions. All right, so once again, Judges 15, 9 through 17. Then the Philistines came up and encamped in Judah and made a raid on Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? They said, We've come up to bind Samson to do to him as he did to us. Then 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Edom and said to Samson, do you not know that the Philistines are rulers over us? What then is this that you've done to us? And he said to them, As they did to me, so I've done to them. And they said to him, We've come down to bind you, that we may give you into the hands of the Philistines. And Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not attack me yourselves. They said to him, No, we will only bind you and give you into their hands. We will surely not kill you. So they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lekei, the Philistines came shouting to meet him. Then the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became as flax that had caught fire. And his bonds melted off his hands, and he found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, and put out his hands and took it. And with it he struck a thousand men. And Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey have I struck down a thousand men. As soon as he'd finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone out of his hand, and that place was called Ramath Lique. Okay, so there are your key verses. Jump right in. First question, discussion question. Pray about this and talk about what stands out to you from our story. There's a lot there. Discuss that now. Okay, hopefully that generated some good discussion for you. We'll move right along to question two here. Question two, how are the men of Judah missing salvation in our story? Pray about that. Uh, refer back to your story as much as you need to and, and talk about that. How are the men of Judah missing salvation in our story? Do that now. Okay, so... Samson, whether, whether we like Samson's motives or like Samson's tactics or not, uh, God has, has made it known from the beginning that he, he, his plan for Samson is to begin to, to save the, the Israelites from the Philistines. So Samson is the picture of salvation in the story, and, uh, and the men of Judah are doing everything in their power to, uh, to, to bind him up and essentially uh, hand him over to death. So let's get a bit more personal here. Question three, how do we neglect God's plan in order to save ourselves in the moment? Because that's what's going on with these men of Judah, right? They're not, they are worried about what's going to happen right now. What are the Philistines going to do right now? They are scared right now. And they are neglecting any, any plan that God may have in order to save themselves right now. So how does that apply to our lives? Question three, how do we neglect God's plan in order to save ourselves in the moment? Pray about that. Talk about that now. Okay, well, again, hopefully you guys uh, really had a good time kind of discussing that. And if you refer back to uh, the, this message, the Sunday message that Pastor Lynn preached to us, uh, great examples that we see in this story, uh, we assume we know something, uh, we have a lack of faith or uh, a strong faith in the wrong things, um, selfishness, and ultimately saving ourselves instead of trusting what God has done for us, trusting what Christ did for us on the cross, we, we try to save ourselves. So to move on to question four, in what ways might you be assuming to know something? This is, this is a big question, 
And you know, there's no temptation that sees you except that that is common to man. And this, this is common to all of us. So pray about this, talk about this. In what ways might you be assuming to know something? Okay, so we got another personal question here. All right. Question five, what might you have faith in that Christ is asking you to let go of? Uh, any number of things there. I mean, they're, they're, you know, it, big to small. They're, they're the big obvious ones, right? Like people that are out there still struggling with substances or um, uh, toxic relationships, um, violent anger issues, lying, things like that. But really, really pray for God to speak to you on this because it's, it's easy for all of us to actually have faith in something that we think is godly when in all actuality um, we have faith in something that God would like us to get rid of. So that's question five. What might you have faith in that Christ is asking you to let go of? Pray about that, talk about that now. All right, and the, and the final question, because really, there, there's a lot of hope. There's a ton of hope. I mean, you know, these can be tough questions, but all of us um, should be asking to see ourselves in sober judgment. All of us should be asking for godly conviction so that we um, can, can, with his help, pass these tests, um, apply some discipline, become more mature, become more patient, uh, develop more integrity. So, <clears throat> excuse me, question six, what is God telling you to do about these temptations, about these struggles? What can you apply? And uh, as you see at the bottom of your outline there, I've included um, a, a number of verses that you can refer to that might help, but just pray about that, talk about that. What can you walk away from this life group with God telling you, to, to do, to apply, in order to, uh, to see these struggles or temptations as the, the tests or opportunities for growth that they are, and to grow closer to, to Christ as a result of them. What's he telling you to do? That's it. That's your life group for this week. Hope you've had a great time. <clears throat> Excuse me once again. Be praying for each other. <clears throat> I'll be praying for you, and I will be back next week, hopefully without a giant frog in my throat. All right, bye.